Hello Dale, Keith with Force here showing you our F15 core alignment splicer. It comes in this heavy carrying case with shoulder straps. This is the splicer itself and I'll go through all the various things on it in just a second. This is the box that our cleaver, I've already taken it out, comes in. So this actually will fit in here for transport. I'm gonna set that out. This is the cleaver. It's a very high quality metal cleaver. It comes with a holder for um, the heavy jacketed jumpers, those large bend and sensitive yellow jumpers, uh, a 900 micron and then a 250 micron fiber will also fit in here all in this same holder. It's uh, from back to front, they get larger. So the bare fiber in the back, two, uh, 900 in the middle, and then the larger diameter yellow jacketed jumpers would go here. And it's got the auto trash bin attachment there. I'll show you how that operates in just a second. This is the cooling tray that goes on the back of the machine. This is the SOC attachment for splice on connectors. These are your extra set of electrodes. This is the USB jump drive that you can use for um, data transfer, getting pictures off. It also has the owner's manual. This is the data cable that plugs in the right side of the machine that you can either plug into a computer or you can use it to attach that USB drive and get your splice data off if you need to upload splice images or just the splice loss data. Uh, you can do that with this. It is actually a locking case, so there's a key included there. This other little piece is the SOC attachment for the heater. So if you're applying an SOC, you would want to remove this left side and put this one on. It's a larger diameter and it lets your SOCs fit in the heat tray slightly easier. Comes with two batteries that have a built-in uh, charge capacity check. So you can check them. They will charge without being in the splicer. So you can charge them at night. They are, what are they? 5,200 milliamp lithium ion batteries. And I will show you the rest of it. It comes with a large AC adapter. That's just the uh, calibration paperwork there. So let's take this out of the case. If I can get it out with one hand and not drop it. There we go. The battery slides in from the right. I'm gonna get it turned on. And I'm gonna try to do my best job of splicing and show you this as quickly as possible. Forgive me, I'm putting my phone in my holder here. Oh shoot, it's wanting to not cooperate. Get that adjusted. Okay. When the machine boots up, it comes up in splice mode. So it's ready to splice. It's just waiting for us to put some fiber in the machine. So I get a piece of fiber. I take a pair of strippers here. So I've got a uh, they don't call that pink. What do they call that? Uh, rose, I believe is the color that we call that. I'm gonna strip it off. So the three steps are strip it, clean it, cleave it. Strip it, 
clean it and I'm going to put it in the cleaver close that oops it jumped on me I've got it cut too long so let's trim that down just a little bit you want to run your color all the way out to the edge of where that black line is there you close that close the lid it's a one two three cleaver so then we've got a good cleaved fiber we take it and I'm gonna place it in the splicer I didn't get it in there correctly. There we go. And then we get the other side. And we do the same thing. Strip it. Clean it. And then I'm going to cleave it. Pulled that little shard over in the trash bin. And then we get the machine back over here. Take that. Put it in there. Close that. I didn't get it in there quite far enough. You need it to land between the blue V groove and the electrodes. And when I close the uh, lid, it will begin to... Uh, try to start lining them up. Let me get my camera situated here. Maybe we can see this better. It's going to align them. I turned on a pause. You can see at the top of the screen so that it stops and lets me look at them. That was pretty quick. I apologize, my phone was jumping around. I press set. It's going to arc them together. Splice is done. We got a dot zero two. So then you'd take it out if I had done what I should have done and put my heat sleeve on. You would simply open the heat tray, move the fiber from here to the back, and I broke it because I'm doing this one handed. Close that. It would heat it. You can press the heat button to come on manually, or you can set it to come on when it senses something down in there. There's a, a small depress uh, switch in there. When it senses fiber, it will turn the heater on, or you can turn it on manually. That's the operation of the splicer.